Hi, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to start talking about how we graph three-dimensional functions. So functions that have x and y as the input with z as the output. And specifically, I'm going to talk about level curves and contour maps. So to do this, I'm going to just define what they are first, and then I will do two examples with you just to show you how they work. And as we're going through this, just remember that this is a way for us to get a sense of what a three-dimensional shape looks like in two dimensions. So the whole point of this is to help us understand the graph. And to do that, we're going to look at sort of just two dimensions of it to help us get a better sense. So we say that a level curve, which another name for it is a contour of some function we're looking at Let's say that function is f. So the level curve is going to be a curve and it's gonna have this specific form. So the form is z naught z sub zero is equal to f of x and y. And specifically, z naught is a constant. Okay, so let's unpack what's going on here. So we're defining a level curve or contour and I'm saying that we do this for a function f, and the main thing we're going to do is we're gonna take that function and set it equal to a constant. So I'm choosing some z value, that's like some height or some output, and I'm going to set the function equal to that. So you can sort of imagine that this would have a z axis that we'd be graphing the shape on, this function on, and the idea is that we're just going to pick like a slice of it. We're just going to pick a constant for z and look at what happens on that constant. So I think the best way for us to do this is to look at some examples. So what we're going to do is look at some level curves for a specific function. And let's do f of x, y let's do x squared plus y squared. Okay, so if you've never seen this before, you probably don't really know what shape this function looks like in three dimensions. So you might be noticing that this x squared plus y squared looks somewhat familiar. So in two dimensions, our circle has an equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where that circle is centered at the origin. So you can imagine that this three dimensional shape must have something to do with circles. So looking at level curves is going to help us sort of understand that to begin with. And then I'll also show you what the three dimensional shape looks like too. So to do some level curves, I have some values for Z that I picked out and I wanna do those specific Z values cause I think they work nicely. We're gonna do Z naught equals one, Z naught equals four, and Z naught equals nine. Okay. So just a comment, if you were doing this on your own and it was just like, think of some level curves, you could pick like whatever constant you wanted for Z, for that Z sub zero, Z naught. I'm just choosing these since I know they look the way I want them to and I've prepared this. So whenever you're doing this on your own, you could pick other things. I've already planned what I wanna pick. So that's why we're doing these ones. So the way we graph these level curves is we're going to take the function and set it equal to these values. So we have one equals x squared plus y squared, four equals x squared plus y squared, and nine equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, so looking at that first one, we have x squared plus y squared equals one, and this is just a circle with a radius of one. So remember, it would have r squared as what it's equal to, and so here that r is just one, that's my radius. Then for my second one, I'm going to have here a circle with radius two. That's because two squared is four. So this is centered at the origin, radius two. And then my last one is a circle with radius three. So what's happening is at the z level of one, we have a circle of radius one. At the z level of four, we have a circle with radius two. And at the z level of nine, we have a circle with radius three. 
So what I can do is graph these on an x, y axis. So I can put my x and y here. I've prepped this already, so this is the um, as much as I need. And we're just going to graph these on x and y. So you can kind of imagine that the z axis is coming like straight out of the center here, and we're looking down at the graph. So we're looking down at just the x and the y axes. So for z equals 1, we have a circle of radius 1, so I'll put that in. That's my circle of radius 1. And what we often do is we label this. So this has a z of 1, so I'm going to label it with a 1 to let me know that that's the height there, everywhere on that line. Then my next level curve is z equals 2, and I have a circle of radius 2. And let me get it there, just quite the right shape. Okay, and again, I would label this one as 4, since this has a height of 4. I think I might have said 2 before. I meant 4, so this is a z of 4. It's a circle with radius 2. Then the last one has a z level of 9, and the radius is 3. So you can be thinking, okay, if I was looking down from the top of this function, I would see these sort of circles cascading downward. So we'd start high at 9, and then we'd go down until we get to 1 closer to the center. And this sort of helps me envision what it looks like in three dimensions. And of course, if we have a plot, so I have one here I've done ahead of time. Um, I took this from the textbook Active Calculus. So this is an image from there. And if we look at this, this is the shape we were talking about. This is z equals x squared plus y squared. And it has those circles that we graphed as our level curves. So you can imagine maybe somewhere close to the bottom. It's got, and I don't know why I can never draw ovals on here. It's got, would have a level curve down here that's like a circle. And then we'd have another one higher up for that level four. Well, okay, hopefully you get the point. I'm not doing very well on these level curves here probably just because I'm nervous and recording. Okay, but anyway, the idea here is just that the level curves help us understand the three-dimensional shape a little bit and give us some understanding specifically for the heights that go with x and y values. Okay, I want to just do one more example to show you a one other type of level curve that we might encounter. So here the level curves were circles, but they don't have to be, so let's look at another example. Okay, so in this example, let's find some level curves. I'm going to do my function. <laughs> let's do g of x and y is equal to negative 2x minus y plus 3. All right, so I'm going to just choose some z values for us so that we have some to graph. Let's do z equals 0, z or z naught equals 2, and then z naught equals 4. So as I mentioned before, I'm choosing these because I like them and I think they work well for what I'm trying to illustrate. You could pick different level curves if you were doing this on your own, or if you're following along, you might want to just choose another z-value to try it out and see what happens. Okay, so the main process again is that we take the z-value and set it equal to the function. So we're kind of looking at the cross-section when z is 0, then when z is 2, and when z is 4. Okay? I'm trying to plot these on x, y axes, and so I'm going to solve for y equals just because that's more comfortable to me and I think I can graph them better if they're y equals something. So for this first one, I am going to just move that y over to the other side. So I have y equals negative 2x plus 3. So I'm noticing that this is a linear function or a, lin a line that we're going to be graphing for our curve. So I'm imagining that the rest of them are probably going to be lines too. So I'm going to move the y over to the left-hand side. Oh, and I wrote pluses here when they definitely should be minuses. Okay, I'm going to move that y over to the other side. And then I'm going to subtract the 2 on the left-hand side over to the right-hand side as well. And so now when I combine these together, I'm getting y is negative 2x plus 1. So we have two lines already. These each have slopes of negative 2, and then they just have different y-intercepts.
let's do the last one. So I'm just gonna move that Y over again. And then I subtract the four over. And so I'm getting Y is negative two X minus one for this third level curve. So just a comment, and we're gonna see this in a moment. When you look at our equation for G of X, I'm noticing, because I've seen this before, that this is going to be a plane. So we've talked about planes previously and equations for planes. So this has a number times X, a number times Y, and then it has a Z value. It's just kind of hiding with this G of X, Y, that's our Z, and then the plus three. So because these are just like an X, Y, Z, and a constant added together with numbers in front of them, there's no squares or anything, this is going to be a plane. And if you ever forget that, I think the level curves are really what helps me remember because when we draw them, you're going to see that they represent like a plane. There's no curvature happening. Okay, so let's plot these. I have some axes ready to go and I'm going to scroll past the equations and just look at them on a separate sheet. So if you have them written down, hopefully that will be helpful to you. So again, we're looking down at the function sort of like with the Z axis coming straight out of the page. And I am looking at different levels for Z, level curves or contours. So the first one is Z equals zero. It's negative two X plus three. So I have a Y intercept of three and then a slope of negative two. And so this is going to be my level curve. It's actually not much of a curve, it's just a line. And we're gonna label this with the height. This is a height of zero. So the Z was zero here. Then as we go up to z equals two, so we're kind of stepping up one level, we're going to have um, this next one, which is negative two x plus one. So we're at one on the y, and then the slope is the same, so these are parallel. And this one has a height of two. Oops. Okay, then the third one, we have a height of four, and it was negative two x minus one. So it has negative one on the Y, still a slope of negative two, so it's still parallel. And there we go. So this has a Z value of four. So you can imagine sort of as we come from the left to the right, we're walking downhill. So we start up at four, we walk down to two, and then we walk down to zero. And this is going to match the three-dimensional shape. So graphing this, I can sort of envision the um, plane in my mind and like one of the ways you could even do this would be to like I'm gonna just duplicate this and what we could do is rotate it down so you can imagine when we do it in three dimensions let me put it over here when we do it in three dimensions the X sort of comes out into the left and the Y comes out into the right. And so you can imagine in three dimensions, if we sort of push this down, this back down, and look at it with perspective, this is going to be a plane that comes down through the X and Y plane. So I've graphed this for us. Let's look at it. Here it is. So we have that plane that cuts down at Y equals three, and we have that X equals one and a half there. And there's the plane. So those level curves sort of enforced, reinforced to me um, the level that this is a plane and that we go downhill as we sort of walk down this portion of the plane. And hopefully graphing those level curves sort of helps us envision that shape. Okay, that is it for this video. I just wanted to tell you about level curves and how we find them. In the next video, we will start talking about some more shapes and more level curves and how they relate just to get you used to how level curves represent the three-dimensional shape. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.